Hello everyone, I will start this lesson with a quick prediction. I'm uh, defining a person in here who's 25 years old, bachelor degree, studies for 14 years, works 40 hours a week, never married, from the United States, works in sales, white, not in family, is a male and works in private sector. Uh, this is based on data from 1994. So this might not reflect the marketplace today, but I will try to make a prediction whether he makes more or less than $50,000 a year. Um, it tells us that he makes less than $50,000 a year. Let's look at the same guy 10 years later when he was 35. He still works the same 40 hours, bachelor degree, same occupation, same everything. Let's see what happens in 10 years. Now he makes more than $50,000 a year. If we changed the race, his race to black, we can see that he makes less than $50,000 a year. What if he was working um, 45 hours a week? Now he uh, makes more than $50,000 a year. What if that was a female? Makes less than uh, $50,000 a year. Um, let's try to make that 50 hours. Still less than $50,000. Let's make that 55 hours a week. Now she can make more than $50,000. This might look like a very bad results or um, it might not um, sound like uh, good results to everyone but this is just based on census data from 1994. Um, so uh, this is a uh, lesson two of uh, machine learning series and it's an introduction to machine learning. If you have not seen uh, part one we discuss uh, Python, IPython notebooks, Matplotlib, NumPy, Pandas, and Amazon Web Services. In this lesson, we'll be replicating the results that we have just seen in our quick prediction system. We will um, Machine learning uh, uses um, uh, regression clustering and classification as um, basic uh, tools to um, um, emulate learning and um, um, do predictions. Um, so, uh, let's uh, go to uh, Amazon Web Services and let's go to our uh, management console. Um, you can go to Amazon Web Services, aws.amazon.com. Uh, if you don't have an account, open one, it's free. And everything that we will be using in this uh, lesson will be free. So, you can replicate uh, everything uh, we do without... Um, paying anything to uh, Amazon Web Services. We'll be using uh, services from the f uh, free tier for the purposes of uh, this lesson. Let's go to uh, EC2, the service that we'll be using. Um, we will launch a new uh, instance. Um, choose your AMI from community AMIs. Look for the one I left uh, public. It's called IPython Notebook Server. Actually, you can just go with IPython and hopefully you won't find anything besides my um, um, public uh, AMI. Uh, select that. And... That's taking a little bit to load. That's taking more than usual to load, actually. Let's go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, select again. Um, choose the micro instance. This is within the free tier. You can choose something bigger if you want. That uh, will make your um, system a little faster. Uh, next, we can just go to review and launch. Once you're in review and launch, go down to security groups, edit security groups, and open 
the extra two ports that we need to manage the system 8080 and 8000 review and launch then click launch if you don't have um, a key uh, create a new one and save it somewhere safe I will use uh, the key I already created before it's um, launching my uh, instance now you can see that I have tried to record this lesson earlier and that did not go well so uh, um, the first thing we do we name our instance I will just call it um, lesson 02 so I can tell it from the other one and it's initializing now we can access it from the public IP so we'll copy the uh, public IP and we'll go to it colon 8080 that will take us to IPython notebook server once we're there uh, we'll put the password the default password is R-O-S-H-A-N Roshan R-O-S-H-A-N go to uh, listen to Introduction to Machine Learning. It, this might take a few seconds to load. It's a um, big uh, notebook. So, in um, this lesson, we'll learn about uh, scikit-learn. We'll learn how to choose which um, type of algorithm um, uh, to use. And um, we'll learn about some um, public uh, data sets uh, that uh, you can use to experiment and uh, learn with uh, and then we will be uh, talking we will uh, be replicating the classification example that we have seen in the beginning of this uh, lesson uh, one important tool that we always need is Agenti it's our administration interface we will open this link and we will paste our IP um, in the place of the word IP um, it will tell us that it's not a signed certificate that's okay or not verified certificate because it's self-signed um, username and password the username is root and the password is admin admin Don't want it to remember. Thank you. And thank you. Okay, we will be um, using this tool mainly to monitor our memory usage during this lesson. So we want to keep an eye on uh, memory usage. Uh, we want to make sure we don't go beyond our memory. Um, if we exceeded the uh, the memory will start using swap and that would be a very big no-no in any um, machine learning uh, application you always want to use only uh, memory so uh, let's go back to um, the lesson um, scikit-learn scikit-learn it's um, a machine learning uh, library written in python it's simple, efficient, it has tools for data mining and data analysis. Um, so uh, machine learning uh, uses three types of uh, algorithms um, depending on uh, um, the problem that you have in hand. We have clustering. Um, clustering is used to group data into groups according to their similarities. So in here we had black dots all over the place and a clustering algorithm and decided um, predicted that these uh, orange points um, belong to one group um, red points belong to another group and red and green points to 
uh, and the green points belong to a third one. It could not um, cluster the rest of those black dots on the screen. Uh, classification. Uh, in here we have um, black data points and white data points. And the algorithm um, made a decision function that will tell if a new uh, data point will be considered black or white um, without knowing if it's black or white, just depending on where does it fall uh, on this chart. So if it came anywhere in here, it's a black data point. Anywhere in here, it will be a white data point. Uh, that's um, that's another way to do um, uh, the same problem, to classify the same problem with different um, weights for the algorithm. The third thing that we'll be dealing with is regression. Uh, and here we have a few um, data points, the red data points. The algorithm will try to fit a line that goes through them and it will predict where does this where um, where does it think this might go and it will show you um, according to the algorithm that you're using an area of confidence so this is um, an area of confidence that it might um, proceed to anything within this area um, this is a little uh, chart that shows us which uh, algorithm to use. It doesn't have every algorithm in scikit-learn, but it's a very good place to start if you don't know um, um, if you don't know which algorithm to use. So it will ask you first: Do you have more than fifty samples? No. Uh, go get more data. Um, if you're predicting a category or a quantity, if you're just looking at data. Um, if it's labeled data or not, you will it will lead you to some algorithm that you can use if it's text data or not, and it will help you choose uh, an algorithm. Again, it doesn't have every algorithm in the system, uh, but it's a very good place to start. Um, data sets. Um, you need data sets uh, to work with the machine learning. This is, um, these are some uh, data sets to get you started. This is an archive. It's a public archive for machine learning. And this is the um, scikit-learn uh, data sets that's uh, public. Um, so um, inside the, um, each data set, you will find um, samples which represent records. So if a data sample is about people, each sample will be one person and it will have features or attributes and those features represent a, a feature about that person. It might be age, it might be income or something else. Um, so let's um, examine some data. We will be uh, working with this data set from, uh, from uh, UCI. And um, this data set is uh, 48,000 48, records, more than 48,000 records. It has uh, 14 uh, attributes. Uh, here is um, some information about it. These are papers that cited this data set. You can see a very long list of papers that cited this uh, data set. And um, we can go to data folder and um, and here we will see the file that has the actual data. This is the file that has the actual data that we'll be dealing with. And we can either download this file into our machine and upload it through Agenti to our um, data folder, or we can fetch it directly over the internet. So let's go back to our lesson. Um, this uh, data, I... Um, uh, I copied the um, description of each uh, column in the data set. Uh, this is a small sample of the data set. So you can see, for example, this person is 39 years old, works for state government. This is his weighted um, demographic number. Um, bachelor degree, studied for 13 years, never married. Um, 
uh, admin clerical nothing family white male this is capital gain capital loss works for 40 hours a week from the United States he makes less than fifty thousand dollars a year so um, we will uh, start to um, build that example that we have uh, just seen the predictive model for a classification that classifies if people make more or less than fifty thousand dollars so we will execute the first um, code cell to import our libraries to execute any cell any code cell click in the cell and um, hit shift and enter and once you see the number appears in here this means it finished processing this data cell um, second thing we will do we will load data so we can fetch it directly from the URL or use the path for this file you can upload the file download it to your system and upload it uh, to the um, uh, data folder and using Agenti um, and here I just uh, named the columns because in the um, data set it doesn't mention the columns uh, the column names within the data set so um, I have the column names in here and I'm using pandas to read comma separated value this is a method that reads comma separated value files to know how does this method work uh, or works you can go inside the um, method and hit shift tab and this will show us this little uh, interesting uh, hit it again it will show us this little interesting help box we can expand it and see these are all parameters that you can pass to read comma separated value and it will um, help you read the file in the right format so we'll be fetching it directly from the URL uh, second thing we notice about file the separator is not just comma it's comma then space so we will use the parameter for separator um, to uh, do that I'll pause the video and I will be back um, the uh, second parameter is um, names um, and here we pass um, a list with the uh, column names for the comma separated uh, value file because this comma separated value file uh, doesn't come with um, headers in the file um, the last parameter we're using is in rows which is number of rows we're limiting that to 20,000 because of the limited amount of um, memory we have um, in our instance so let's um, run that again to execute shift and enter um, we will um, do some uh, statistical analysis of uh, our numerical uh, features we have age between um, 18 and 90 um, this is uh, a weighted um, identifier f of um, demographic or something like this uh, I, I read the description I couldn't get exactly what does it do um, uh, education numbers the number uh, number of years people studied so um, around 50% is um, 10 years um, capital gain almost no one made any money and capital lost almost no one lost any money um, hours uh, per week this is uh, how many hours per week people work and we can see very clearly that almost everyone is working around 40 to 45 hours a week um, so this is um, how we can uh, describe our data um, always remember that your data is stored in this variable um, CSV underscore data um, visual inspection um, this is a scatter matrix of all the features um, I pre-executed this um, code cell so you, so you don't have to do that it will take a few minutes if you try to do it again um, so I um, 
executed that before I started uh, this uh, lesson. And it, in your instance, you will find the executed um, version with the um, chart. This chart basically um, um, lists all numerical features, age, uh, weighted um, uh, demographic, um, education number, capital gain, capital loss, and hours uh, per week. Uh, and it um, plots all of that or scatters all of that against the same features. And whenever the features, uh, the feature is uh, scattered against itself, so hours per week, uh, with hours per week, um, it gives a histogram of that uh, feature. So we can very clearly tell that everyone works 40 hours a week. There is a little bump around 50 and a smaller one around 60. Um, uh, capital uh, gain and loss, we can see that it's, uh, there, is no, um, there is no data there because almost everyone made zero. Um, this is um, education number, so how many years people studied. Uh, we can tell that almost everyone studied uh, 9 years, then 10. Those are the highest values. Then we have a little bump around here, which is 13 years. So 13 years, 14, 15, and 16 finally uh, in here. Um, I don't understand this feature, so I wouldn't try to explain it. This is age. This is just a histogram of uh, age. We can tell that almost everyone is in... Uh, this range and it drops uh, rapidly after that which is around um, uh, 45 years of age um, so we will uh, visualize uh, some uh, data um, we will scatter um, again to um, get the little help box for any um, method like a uh, scatter uh, method we hit uh, shift and tab and we get this um, help uh, box or help window uh, we can see that we should pass an X and Y uh, then we can put colors there markers color map we, there are a lot of uh, features that we will be using alpha we will be using that too um, this is um, transparency uh, uh, level for colors so we'll be using that too so uh, we're scattering X which is the education number which is how many years did someone study um, against age so uh, our Y will be age and our X will be numbers uh, number of uh, education years uh, and here we're doing a little filter so whenever we want to filter our data, we pass one of our um, um, columns. So we pass income and equals equals to any value, which is more than 50K. Uh, that will filter only people with more than 50,000 uh, in um, uh, annual income. Uh, we're using alpha of two percent, so it's only showing um, two percent of the color, uh, which is 98 percent transparent. Um, we're putting a label there so we can identify it, and using red color for uh, people with higher than 50,000. We're doing the same thing for people with income less than 50,000, and we're uh, scattering them in blue color. Uh, we're um, showing uh, legend and final method which shows actually the chart and this is our chart we can tell that more people who studied like 16 years are most probably will be making money since the beginning of their career people with 15 years around the same time but maybe a little later uh, people around 14 years um, well, there is a still a very high chance that they would be making more than 50,000. 13 years around their 
uh, end of their career they would most probably be make, making more than that we can tell that there aren't much people who studied 11 or 12 years mm, 10 and 9 uh, we can see that people who stayed until they're well around 60 uh, when they actually made uh, more than 50,000 and we can tell that almost no one before that time um, is making uh, good money but uh, there aren't much people in that bracket anyway we can see the faint colors which uh, tell us the density of uh, people in here the problem with this chart uh, everything is um, scattered on one line because no one studied like nine and a half years or 9.3 or 9.1 or um, 8.9 so everything is scattered on one line so to take care of that we add a random value of 0.5 uh, minus 0.5 to 0.5 which scatters uh, this line within a range and it never goes to the um, next range because it scatters only uh, between uh, minus 5 and plus 5 so to do that we add um, numpy random uniform uh, minus 5 to a um, uh, minus 0 0.5 to uh, plus 0 0.5 and we will generate an array that's similar in length to our data set so we're getting the length of our data set and passing that as a parameter so it will generate a random list of numbers between minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 um, and the length of that array will be uh, or list will be the length of our data and we're adding that to education num which is the number of uh, years they studied and we're storing the result of that in uh, education num underscore rnd for random uh, to differentiate this uh, feature we're plotting on a bigger um, chart that's 12 uh, by 8 that's a big chart we're doing basically the same thing in here and in here but we're changing the alpha value to 10 per to uh, 10 percent so uh, points will be more clear um, in here we can see in the legend we can barely see anything if you don't have uh, very good contrast in your screen you won't be even seeing uh, the faintest dots because it's only because it's 98 percent um, transparent and here it will be 90 percent transparent so it will be fairly uh, visible um, after that i'm um, uh, adjusting um, x-axis and y-axis by adding um, um, labels to them and uh, adjusting ticks and limit and uh, finally i'm putting a grid and title on the chart and after that I'm dropping the feature that we calculated with the random number so we get back to our original dataset let's uh, plot this and see what we get that might take a few seconds to process because it's a big chart and we can see way more information than our original chart we can see the trend in here uh, where uh, uh, the more people uh, spend in studying the later they enter um, the uh, market where we see people entering the market around their 30s uh, who studied around 16 years uh, we can see a little um, a dense area in here which shows that some people are actually working um, uh, part-time at uh, a very young um, age around uh, let's say 18 or 17 and um, we can see this very large blue area uh, which is around nine years where no one uh, almost no one is making more than 50,000 10 years people above 50 are they do have a good chance of making more than 50,000 there isn't much people in this area we can clearly see that now and we can see a dense area around 13 years where more people are making more than 50,000 um, after a few years of their career after almost uh, less than 10 years of their career they have a good chance of making more than 50,000 um, 
14, 15, and 16, we can see it getting redder and redder, and um, the um, the threshold for uh, where they can start making more than 50,000 is down to their the beginning of their career, basically. We can see the dense area going like this, almost, where um, this area is the high income um, uh, area of our chart. Um, processing GetX features. Um, you can uh, uh, process um, text features to convert them to numbers. And this is what we, uh, or binary, uh, like 0 and 1, which are still numbers. Uh, but you need to process your um, text uh, features and convert them to numbers somehow to make them um, machine learning compatible. Uh, the way to do that, you can, um, you can vectorize your data, which says, for example, if you have three people, uh, if you have three cities like uh, London, New York, uh, and Toronto, and this w this is uh, would be their uh, your user's location. You can vectorize those features to a feature with um, true or false, and it just says, for example, um, he lives in London. So if someone lives in London, they will have one there. And a second feature will be lives in New York. A third feature will be lives in Toronto. For someone who lives in uh, London, th he will get for the first feature one, zero for second feature, and zero for the third feature. Um, if you have um, there, uh, another way is to uh, convert it to a um, series of number representing uh, their original value. So sometimes you'll get uh, results like excellent, good, average, bad, terrible. You can easily convert that to five, four, three, two, one, which would still keep the original uh, meaning of uh, data. With the text document, use um, uh, uh, count vectorizer. Um, it's a way to um, process big documents, big text documents. Um, we will uh, go through that in a later lesson. And finally, have special values. Sometimes you have emails, URL, phone number, username. Um, you have to process some of those with special treatment. For example, for a URL, you want to um, fetch that page and process the content of that page using text um, processing but you still want to see if there is an image there it might be a link to an image uh, it might be um, a link to a social media page where you want to know who owns that page and store that information to and so depending on uh, what do you want to do with the data you might need to do special treatment for those um, uh, special values uh, we will um, will um, proceed with uh, this uh, data now we'll uh, vectorize our data but we will um, the first thing we will do we will drop an A which drops um, not available records so and record with um, uh, nulls or blank data it will be dropped then it's dropping few um, columns capital gain capital loss uh, income uh, income because it's the uh, results that we want to um, predict and the weighted uh, demographic and we're dropping those three features because they are um, not uh, machine learning um, useful to us um, because there is almost no data on those two and this one is um, it has a very large uh, range and I'm not really sure that it represents anything that uh, can be related to um, the result that we want to calculate uh, finally I'm um, um, converting that to a dict which is a dictionary and the output type is records so it will um, uh, create a list of dictionaries each dictionary has all the values in a single record and finally it's converting that to an array um, I'm adding an extra column 
um, uh, sorry, I'm adding a, a new value called results and it equals to comma separated value of income which is this column of uh, comma separated value data equals equals more than 50k uh, so it will compare more than 50k to each value in here and if it's equal to it it will return true if it's not it will return false and it will store this list of trues and false true and false uh, results in uh, a variable called results um, um, actually now we split uh, data into uh, a training and testing set so uh, we have uh, 20,000 records we will uh, be training with all our records um, except the first um, except the, for the first thousand so we go thousand column and if you leave that empty it will um, use the rest of that list uh, w for features which is the vectorized features from our um, comma separated value uh, data um, a second we have uh, results and we're getting all the results except the first 1000 for our test uh, data we're using the first 1000 so we go um, empty colon 1000 so it will start from the beginning and stops at 1000 and the same thing with uh, results uh, let's see just uh, one um, of the records just to uh, vis uh, to visualize that and understand how this look it's a dictionary with all the features inside it and um, that w uh, is what's uh, passed to the vectorizer uh, that um, converts all those um, text uh, text uh, or string um, features into numbers basically into binary numbers um, We'll train a, a, um, a classification model using KNN. Um, instead of trying to learn what th does this uh, algorithm do exactly, uh, it's much better just to see the results, learn uh, other uh, algorithms, and try to uh, basically um, uh, develop experience in um, choosing the right uh, algorithm with time it's um, oh sorry we did not uh, process this one yet uh, we should execute this one first then we go back to this one and execute it so we have a variable called uh, knn now that has a um, um, a non-neighbor classifier um, and it's fitted with uh, X training and Y train and Y training sets uh, which are which is the complete data set except the first thousand uh, records now we want to do a prediction so we'll predict our X test then compare our prediction to Y test and that would be our accuracy so let's uh, test that uh, find it I'm printing just the first uh, 10 predictions and I'm printing the prediction itself and I'm prediction I'm predicting the uh, printing the um, uh, prediction equals the actual data so it will tell us if it's a uh, correct prediction or not uh, so we can visualize at least 10 of the results and see how do they look and here we have a loop I promise to explain things as we go so uh, for counter that's how we um, do loops in Python for counter in range of 10 so that will um, range of 10 is a method that will create a list uh, that's uh, like this it will be uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and that would be equal to range uh, 10 but instead of doing that it's much easier to write range then so um, this is done uh, our accuracy is 81 uh, percent sample data it predicted that this guy doesn't make more than 50 that was correct false correct false correct false correct true false uh, it predicted this guy made more than 50,000 but he didn't this guy made more than 50 but he didn't 
and here it predicted he didn't make more than 50 and it was true and more it predicted more than 50 and it's true um, less than 50 and it was false he ac actually made more than 50 uh, true and it's true so he uh, prediction is more than 50 and the actual was more than 50 um, we will uh, see better reports now once we're um, trying to improve our accuracy so uh, to improve our accuracy there are a couple of parameters inside this uh, classifier one of them is the number of neighbors that it will use so in neighbors and the other one is uh, the weights uh, method so it has two weights method one called uniform and the other is uh, called distance and we will so we will be looping over range from 1 to 15 and we will be looping inside of that with um, uniform and distance um, and we are passing um, the value of the first loop and the value from second loop to the um, parameter to um, test different values so we'll be testing all values from 1 to 15 for n and we'll be testing all values uh, for uniform and distance for each of those values so let's run that that might take a little bit of time to run so that's the first um, one neighbors one weight uniform um, uh, precision recall if one score and support uh, this is the standard report that we use to um, test the accuracy of a classifier support is um, the number of samples for um, each class we have so the number of samples for uh, less than 50,000 was 768 and for more than 50,000 was uh, 232 so we can see that we have way more people making less than 50,000 um, in this sample um, the total number is 1000 uh, precision is um, uh, one uh, one of um, our um, metrics for measuring the accuracy of um, a classifier uh, and it's showing the precision for each class recall is very important we want to make sure we have high recall values that will ensure high accuracy because recall is not just um, um, getting uh, the correct answer because uh, recall is calculated by calculating all um, a true positives which is like uh, correct um, detections uh, divided by correct detections plus um, false negatives which is um, values that it did not uh, it did not um, it missed basically so um, this is recall value we want to make sure we have good recall values um, if one score is another metric all of them uh, the highest value for all of them is one and the lowest is zero so we're looking for values higher um, and closer to one uh, this is our first one uh, it has uh, 79 overall accuracy but this is the report that we will be looking at from now on um, so one uniform um, good values we have um, distance with one it doesn't really matter but with the more than um, uh, one uh, neighbor it will start making a difference between uniform distance uh, weighting methods uh, and here we can see um, really low uh, recall value um, that's still uh, not really good we can see that uh, we have so many um, uh, this is actually this is fairly good actually the results that we have for five neighbors is um, fairly accurate 81% is uh, a good uh, number um, in here even if it's a even though it's uh, 83 overall the um, actual numbers we have for recall is really bad so that's not a, that's not a model that you want to be working with um, well this one still not really good that's a good one that's a good uh, prospect seven with the uniform um, 
I think the best one I found was number 11. Yes, this is it. Uh, it's 11 uh, neighbors with the um, uniform weights. You can see the rest of the results. You can go through them. You can uh, use a specific one of them to uh, do some uh, testing, some further testing. So we will um, use this one with 11 and uniform and we will um, keep our trained model using those uh, parameter in KNN. Uh, usually want to um, put the predictions back into the um, original data set if you want to save that as a file to send it back to your client or something. Um, so that's how you do that. You just um, add a new column and you put your predictions in there as a um, uh, panda series. Um, and this is the example that we started with in the beginning of this um, lesson. Uh, let's run that one last time just to see. Um, more than 50,000. These are all the values. You can use those values in here to um, um, define different people and see how uh, changes affect their income. Um, this is a little chart I got from Wikipedia that will help you uh, if you did not study in the US to um, identify how many years do you need to um, have different uh, levels of uh, education. So this is education number. Uh, this is the end of uh, lesson two. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them on um, this uh, video as a comment or on uh, Twitter or Google+. Uh, thank you for watching and um, hope to see you next time.